Miss Fortune isn't a hard character to pick up and start playing immediately. Her basic but extremely fun kit makes her one of the most popular ADCs in the game. But due to her simplicity, many players don't realize how much more they could be doing in their games. A novice and an expert on the champion look completely different in their ability to carry on Miss Fortune. Not to worry, we'll be covering everything in this guide, ranging from her playstyle, combos, tips and tricks, and the exact build you'll need to play just like a Misfortune main. Now, you've probably wondered to yourself, is skill capped really worth it? Well, let's find out. What rank were you before you started skill capped? So, I was bronze, but I think I was working my way back down to iron. May have been high silver, but I think I was gold. And what's the highest rank you've achieved with skill capped? I've got several accounts I've hit gold on. I'm in two. Is there anything skill capped helped you learn that would have taken you longer without it? If I keep track of where that enemy jungler is, uh, he's on the other side of the map, and he's it looks like he's ganking by bot lane, and I'm on the top side of the map. Uh, I can't get there in time, so there's no way I can impact that. I'm going to go seal his top side camps, or I'm going to grab Rift now. Just lots of ideas like, hey, I'm strong early, I'm Lee Sin, let's like analyze all the lane matchups and go to a lane where I have Pryo and Invade. Like that's not something I would be doing on my own every game, but that is something I'm doing because of skill cap. When I played League before skill caps, I was sort of playing and feeding my way around. Um, and then after coming across skill caps and trying it for a little while, during one of the videos, I think, a sudden click of Hold on a second. This is not. This is not just a game of running around and and killing people. This is a game about strategy. This is a game about moving the pieces so that the future becomes predictable and then acting on that future. So what are you waiting for? Get real results at skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Kicking things off with playstyle. Misfortune is nothing short of a lane bully during the early stages of the game. Her Q and E are powerful zoning tools that demand a lot of respect. Your opponents are never safe behind minions and they'll always be eating a ton of poke from your E, making their lives miserable. You should be trying to score a lead during the lane phase with your early strength, but how she plays afterwards can vary greatly depending on the build you've chosen to run on her. There's two very distinct ways you can build Misfortune, and learning how to use this versatility is what will set you apart from other players. There's the crit variation, where your goal should be to abuse your absurd movement speed to chase your opponents down, giving them no chance of escape. Or you can choose the armor pen build, which primarily focuses on landing the perfect team fight ultimate, which deletes your opponents instantly. You can play whichever style you enjoy most, but if you're a flexible player, then you should be adapting your choice from game to game. During the draft phase, if you find that the enemy team has a lot of champions that make it seem like you're going to have a hard time auto-attacking constantly, then you'll want to opt into the lethality build. If you're free to auto though, then you can opt into the crit build. Either way though, let's cover how to actually play Misfortune now so you can get the most out of both builds in your games. Like we mentioned, Misfortune is not the most complex character you're ever going to play. In fact, she's only really got one combo to even learn, and it's something you would have picked up on your own within the first game you play her. Your ultimate is obviously one of the main reasons to pick the champion, so you want to get the most damage out of it possible. So ideally, you always want to drop your E to slow targets to secure as many ticks of your ultimate as you can. Although that's basically it for any true combos Misfortune can do, that's not what separates a noob from an expert on the champion. There's a lot of important tips to maximizing the value out of each of Misfortune's abilities, so let's cover everything you need to know to make the most out of her spells. Starting with her passive Love Tap, you really need to be aware of how to properly manage this debuff, otherwise you're going to deal significantly less damage. Misfortune is actually balanced around having some of the lowest base and scaling attack damage in the game. She's on par with some very weak mages in terms of how much AD she actually acquires. That's because of how absurd her passive is in terms of damage output. At the start of the game, it deals 50% extra damage per auto attack, and by level 13, each passive proc deals 2 auto attacks worth of damage. Needless to say, that's pretty good. But this comes at the drawback of your single target DPS being much lower than most other ADCs. Don't worry though, as long as you understand this, it's really easy to play around. During lane, for example, you usually want to keep trades reserved to about one or two auto attacks at most. Again, a lot of your damage is front loaded on your first auto due to your passive, so you don't want to overcommit into an extended trade. 
You can break that rule though if you're in a fight where you're constantly switching targets like in the following example. During this all-in, notice how Miss Fortune is able to keep alternating autos between Shen and Jinx. This gives her multiple procs of her love tap, which equates to a ton of extra damage being dealt the entire time. Although she ends up being killed by a gank towards the end of the fight, all her extra damage done makes this a favorable 1 for 2 trade just because she understood how to maximize her damage. The next step is to remember that your Q applies love tap to both of the targets that it hits. Finding situations like this where there's a unit behind your main target is ideal for your damage. You can auto for one passive proc, then your Q can bounce to an off target, allowing you to proc your passive on your main target yet again. You can see Misfortune playing around this concept as she does the Krug camp. It's important for maximizing your damage in fights, but for farming efficiently as well. But let's move on to how to actually use your Q to its max potential now. Remember that if your Q kills the target you cast it on, that the second target hit will take a critical strike from the ability. Doubling your ability's damage should obviously be a big priority for you in fights, so here's some ways that you can do so. During the lane phase, you can easily catch your opponents off guard by auto-attacking the minion they're hiding behind. This will put the minion in execute range of your Q, making the bounce deal significant damage. You can even use your E to either get the minions low enough or to keep your opponent in place while you set up a deadly bounce. These tricks will continue to be relevant during all stages of the game since you'll often find yourself fighting around minion waves anyway. It's especially important to be on the lookout for situations like these when you're playing the armor penetration build, as you'll literally one-shot players sometimes. When playing Misfortune, you really need to have the mindset that you can use your opponent's allies against them. Constantly being on the lookout for these types of opportunities will take your harass to the next level. The final thing you need to know about your Q is simply that it can bounce to targets outside of your vision. So if you know that someone's in a brush, you can try to angle your Q so that it bounces to them. Moving on, many players think Misfortune's ultimate is her most powerful ability by far. While it is a game-changing ultimate, Misfortune mains know that most of her power lies in her W because of the movement speed it provides. Her W's buff makes Misfortune the best ADC in the game at rotating around the map quickly. You need to abuse this and constantly move around the map to farm as many resources as possible. Even if you're away from your team for a moment, you can always join up with them simply because of how fast you can cover large distances. That movement speed isn't just useful for running around the map though. Specifically for her crit build, it's what makes Misfortune so strong, but the last thing newer players try to play around when they pick her up. Movement speed is probably one of, if not the strongest stat in the game on a lot of champions, and MF gets a ton of it for free. Look how easily she's able to toy with her opponents thanks to how quickly she can move. Kiting in and out of your opponent's range can also bait out powerful abilities from your enemies. Then once their spells are down, you swoop in for the kill, giving them zero chance to resist. Hopefully it's clear just how overpowered Misfortune's movement speed is, which is why this following tip is super important to cover. Specifically for her crit build, you'll want to run the overheal rune, and in a lot of games, you'll want to pick up Bloodthirster as an item. If you don't know, your movement speed falls off whenever you take non-persistent damage. For example, look how easily it falls off when she's just clearing minions. But your speed will not fall off if the damage is blocked by a shield, hence the previous rune and item recommendations. Look how easily Misfortune is able to carry this following team fight thanks to her movement speed, allowing her to reposition, killing everyone in her path. Without this massive shield on her at all times, her speed would have fallen off instantly, and she wouldn't have been able to carry nearly as hard. Not only is the movement speed insane on this ability, but let's not forget it also comes with a solid attack speed steroid. This cooldown is incredibly important to play around, especially since each time you apply Love Tap to a new target, it will decrease the cooldown. This mechanic makes Misfortune one of the best champions in the game at taking towers when there's a minion wave around. You should alternate your autos between the tower and minions to both proc love tap more often and lower your W's cooldown, maximizing your DPS. And it goes without saying that you should do this against enemy champions as well. Look at how Misfortune is always looking for a new target to auto throughout this encounter, keeping her W up almost the entire time by doing so. Moving on to your E, there's one easy tip to really get value out of this ability. Keep in mind that this spell has a massive range. If you pair that with the fact that you can easily run up to anyone with your W's movement speed, then you can score kills very easily. You just walk up, E from really far away, and ALT. That's it. If you're remotely strong, this will result in a kill very often versus players who don't have any immediate mobility. Keep in mind that this is also significantly more potent on Misfortune's lethality build rather than her crit one. Finally, for your R, remember that this is an insanely powerful damage ability that your opponents will definitely be playing around. It's very important that you always try to wait out their mobility spells before casting it, otherwise it's way too easy to get out of. Generally, this just means that you should be casting it towards the tail end of a fight rather than initiating with it every time. 
Don't just cast it randomly. Always think about how your opponents can play around it before wasting such a powerful spell. All right, let's wrap things up on how to build both variations of Misfortune. If you're going for the crit route, then you'll want to begin by picking up either Kraken Slayer or Gale Force as your mythic item, depending on the game. Then you get your boots into Bloodthirster for the reasons we mentioned earlier. Afterwards, round your build out with some more crit items, depending on what you need. As for your runes and skill order, this is what you'll run for the most part. You want some points early on in your queue because it's such a strong laning tool, but you quickly want to max W afterwards. It's the ability that will synergize the most with your items when building crit. For the armor penetration build, you'll want to start your games with a tier as your first item. Then you almost always build these three items in the following order. You go Eclipse, into Man Immune, and then Cyrildis Grudge. A pro tip for this build as well is to sit on the regular boots for most of the game rather than ever upgrading them. You already get enough movement speed with your W, and none of the boot upgrades are that relevant for this build. After those, you round things out with any of these remaining items. If the game goes really long, then always sell your boots for another lethality or defensive item. As for your runes, you'll want to run this setup, and this time you'll be maxing E, Q, and then W. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. Alright guys, that is absolutely everything you need to play like a Misfortune main. Good luck in your games, and thanks for watching.